um, on the floor, blankets, whatever you have. So come back and just come back to your original cross of your legs and spread the backs of your thighs outwards. Bring your hands to your heart center and lift your chest way, way upwards. Bring your outer shoulders back and relax your back upper neck muscles down. And as you lift your chest upwards, close your eyes, take off any glasses, just settle down from your morning. What I'm finding is that this yoga practice is so important now, just to take a few moments every single day, sometimes many times during the day, just to pause, to regroup, to reconnect with the silence and the stillness and the presence inside that remains content and peaceful and balanced and at ease, no matter what goes on all around. So I'm not sure if you're finding that same experience, but I just share my experience. This yoga practice is really becoming fundamental now even more so than it was before, not to get lost in all of the thoughts of past, future, what's happening, what's going to happen, and just keep coming back to this present moment, to the breath. So yoga, now more than ever. Lift your breastbone upwards and bring your outer shoulders back. Relax the root of your tongue. Bring your eyes back deeper into your head. Draw your ears in deeper. And have a softness over all of the skin of your face. Bring your head down into your heart. And sink your heart into your true essence, that part of you that's simply aware of all that goes on, but remains untouched and unaffected. And with that in our minds and our hearts, let's chant Om together three times. Lift your chest way upwards and then bow your head downwards. Release your hands down to your thighs with your palms up. Raise your head upwards and slowly open your eyes. Okay, now stretch out your legs. Come to Don Dasana. Press the fronts of your thighs into the backs of the thighs and then come up to a standing position. You can move your Props to the side. I'm just going to make sure that no one else needs to be entered into the class. So stand in Tadasana with your feet apart. Everyone's in. So stand with your feet about as wide as your sitting bones and make the inner edges of your feet parallel to each other, and then spread your toes, and spread the skin of your heels. You can even lift up one heel and then the other heel and walk them back a little bit. So there's a real spreading of the skin on the bottoms of your feet. Visualize your heels as if they're horseshoe discs. So bring your body weight back into the heels, 
and move your thighs back. Lift the fronts of your thighs up and move the root of the thighs back. So if your screen comes at all hazy, it's just because Zoom is dealing with um, so many um, users right now. So don't worry about that. So move the root of your thighs back. The root of the thigh has to go back. And as that happens, of course, the buttocks comes up a little bit. So take your thumbs onto the buttocks and move the buttocks down without letting the thighs go forward. So the, you have to hit the top of the thighs back and then bring the top of the buttocks down. And as you bring the top of the buttocks down, notice how the navel comes up. Maintain that as you extend your arms downwards and stretch your elbows, make your elbows straight, as straight as your uh, legs are. Turn the tops of your arms outwards. Lift up through the crown of the head. Tadasana. Urdhvahastasana. Upward hand pose. Bring your arms forward. Keep your palms facing each other. Don't let, them, uh, don't let the thumbs uh, turn out as you go all the way up. So go all the way up. So Urdhvahastasana. Move your inner upper arms back. Squeeze the outer upper arms in. Keep the root of your thighs back. Press into your uh, heels. Keep the body weight back into the heels. Without your thumbs there, move the top of the buttocks down and then lift the abdomen up. Draw your outer hips in. Just draw the outer hips and lift up through the sides of the chest. Move those inner upper arms back. And then bring your arms forward and down. Back to Tadasana. Now bring your arms up. Interlace your fingers in front of you. Turn your palms forward. And raise your arms all the way up. Urdhva, Bada Guliasan. So straighten the legs by lifting up the kneecaps. Shift your body weight back. Move the top of the buttocks down. So you stay in the pose. The top of the buttocks has to go down and the outer hips have to come in. And then lift your ribs upwards. Take your inner upper arms back. Take the outer upper arms in. Relax your jaw. Relax your tongue and your throat. And then bring your arms forward and down and reverse the interlace. So when you go out, turn your palms forward. Look at your elbows. Your inner elbows should be facing each other here. Bring the back upper neck muscles down. Shift back into your heels. Make sure as you go up that you're not leaning the shoulders back. So don't let this happen. Don't let the shoulders go back. What goes back are the arms. The inner upper arms go back. Bring your body weight into the heels. Draw the outer hips in. And then lift up through the sides of the chest and then bring your arms forward and down. So we'll do Gomukhasana. If you have a belt, you can put it over your, your left shoulder. Some of you might need that belt there for Gomukhasana arms. Otherwise, uh, lift up your uh, right arm and bring your left arm around and manually push the bicep backwards with your, with your left thumb, bring the outer armpit forward, and then start to bend this elbow without letting it go out to the side. Keep the elbow in as you hold on to that, uh, that right elbow. And then bring your left arm out to the side, turn your palm backwards, and bring your arms back behind you. So if you can hold the fingers, hold the fingers. Otherwise, use a belt. Have a belt and hold on to the belt. Come back into your heels, lift your thighs upwards, draw the outer hips in. Keep reaching the uh, right elbow upwards, but the inner, this inner right shoulder, it hits down. The inner right shoulder moves down. Draw this outer left shoulder back without just throwing the elbow back. Move your head back into your right forearm. Maybe you can get into the finger or a little bit more belt. Keep lifting through the sides of your chest. And then release, and we'll do the other side. I'm just going to bit one more person. Okay. So, other side. So let's come into Urdva. Let's lift up your left arm. Bring your uh, right arm around, turn the arm so the inner upper arm goes back. Keep bending that elbow, bring it in, and then hold on to this left elbow and reach it upwards. Move your head back into that left forearm. Now bring your right arm out to the side, turn your palm backwards, and then hold on. Hold on. Move your head back, come back into your heels, pull up through the fronts of the thighs, use a belt here as needed. So reach this left elbow upwards, but the inner shoulder right near to the neck, it goes down. So the inner shoulder blade goes down. Move this right shoulder back without just throwing the elbow back. Keep the body weight back into the heels and keep moving the top of the buttocks down like we did in Tadasana. And then go ahead and release. 
Good, now bring your feet back together or together into Tadasana. Shift your body weight back and lift up through your chest. We'll, we'll do Vrikshasana. If you'd like to use a wall for support, have your back against a wall. Balance on your left foot and turn your right leg out from the top of your thigh and bring your right foot all the way up. So the right foot comes all the way up into the top of the thigh. Make sure that your hip isn't going out to the side. So press into the sticky mat with your inner left foot and draw this left hip in. Maintain that as you push your right foot into the thigh. Move this uh, right knee downwards. If you have your balance, you can bring your hands to your heart center. Maybe even lift your arms all the way up. Urdhva Hastasana in the arms. Take the inner upper arms back. And then bring your hands back to the heart center and release. Press into the sticky mat with the inner right heel. Turn your left leg out. Make sure that your bottom foot isn't turning out. So turn this left leg out and bring your left foot all the way up. Feel free to use the wall for balance. Make sure that this hip hasn't gone out to the side. So draw this outer right hip in, and you do that by pressing more weight into the inner right heel. Push this left foot into the thigh and move this left knee down. It goes down. Lip, draw both outer hips in. Lift up through the sides of the waist. Maybe bring your hands to your heart center. Maybe lift your arms all the way up. So Vrikshasana, the tree pose. Take those inner upper arms back. Bring your hands to the heart center and release. Good, now let's do um, Utkatasana at the wall. If you have at the wall, just lean your whole body back into the wall. Bring your feet forward and bend your knees so that your knees come right over the ankles. Knees are together. Bring your body weight back. You stay there. Don't worry, I won't hold you too long. It's a challenging pose. If you need to come up and then go back in, you can do that. Okay, so straighten the knees for a moment and we'll do that again. So inhale, as you exhale, bend your knees, Utkatasana, have your whole back against the wall for today, if you happen to have a wall. If you're not, you can do this pose in the center of the room as well. So bring your ankles right under the knees, draw the knees together, go down, and then maybe raise the arms up. Raise the arms up, reach up, palms are forward now. Bring the sides of your waist back, sides of the waist back. And then bring your arms down, straighten your knees, and release. Good. let's try that in the center. So stand in Tadasana, bring your feet together. Come back to Tadasana. And bring your arms out to the sides this way. Turn the tops of your arms out and raise your arms all the way up. Take those inner upper arms back as you bend your knees, go down. Move the shin bones back, press into the discs of your heels, move the buttocks down. Keep your eyes at eye level, camera level. Move the inner upper arms back. See if you can go a little bit lower, Utkatasan. And now straighten the knees. Bring your arms out to the sides and down. Bring your hands to the center of your chest and step or jump your legs wide apart. If you're stepping, just bring your arms out and then step your right and then your left leg out. Those of you who can jump, you know how to jump. So bring your feet all the way out under the hands. Press into the discs of your heels. Pull the thighs up, the kneecaps up, and move the thighs back, just like we did at Tadasana at the very beginning. Keep the top of the buttocks moving down. That same action applies here, even though your legs are wide, in Utita Hasta Padasana. Straighten your arms. Now turn your left foot in slightly, and turn your whole right leg out from the top of the thigh. Keep turning this right leg out. Move this outer left thigh back. Lift up your right arm and then reach out and bring your right hand down to the leg. Reach your left arm upwards. So straighten your front right leg, turn it out and bring the right buttocks forward into the front right groin. Move your outer left thigh back. This outer left thigh goes back and the inner left leg is lifting. So press more into that outer edge of your left foot. Lift your chest, turn the tops of your arms out. Neck sensitive, stay here. Otherwise, look up at that top thumb. And pull yourself up with your left arm and come up out of the pose. Turn your right toes forward, deepen your breath. Turn the right foot in slightly, turn your whole left leg out from the top of the thigh. Keep turning this left leg out. Lift your left arm up, reach out and bring your left hand down to the leg. 
and bring your right arm in a straight line with your left arm. So straighten, extend this left leg, lift the kneecap, turn the leg out and bring the left buttocks forward. Move this outer right thigh back. Keep lifting this inner right leg away from the floor. Lift your chest, turn the tops of the arms out. Neck sensitive, just look forward. Otherwise, look up at that top thumb and deepen your breath. And then pull yourself up with that right arm. Turn your left foot in and step or jump your legs back together. Right leg in, left leg in if you're stepping. Come back to Tadasana, Samastiti. Okay, we'll do that again. Some of you will go into Ardha Chandrasana. Those intermediate students who know Ardha Chandrasana, you'll go into Ardha Chandrasana. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're just gonna stay right with me, okay? So step or jump your legs wide apart. If you're stepping, step your left leg out and then your right leg out. Bring your feet all the way out. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg all the way out. Pull the kneecaps up, turn the legs out, lift your chest and come back to triangle pose. Uh, intermediate students, go into Ardha Chandrasana, Ardha Chandrasana and be there. So straighten the bottom leg, straighten the back leg, lift your chest, bring your head back, your right shoulder back, but your right buttocks comes forward, either of the poses. Good. Now, if you're in Ardha Chandrasana, slowly come back to Utita Trikonasana. Pull yourself up with your left arm and come up out of the pose. Turn the right foot in and we'll do the other side. You might have to shift if you're doing Ardha Chandrasana to, get, to manage your space. So move the thighs back, turn your right foot in slightly, turn your whole left leg out from the top of the thigh. Okay, lift your chest upwards. If you don't know the Sanskrit words, just stay with me. Stay with me in my practice here. So bring your left arm out, come into Uttita Trikonasana. And those who are doing Ardha Chandrasana, go into Ardha Chandrasana now. So straighten your left leg, straighten your right leg. Turn the top of that left leg out. Bring the left buttocks forward into the front left groin. Those doing Ardha Chandrasana, lift your pelvis up off of that standing leg. Don't let your pelvis sink onto the standing leg. Lift your chest, turn the tops of the arms out. Those of you can, you're looking up, otherwise you're just looking straight forwards. If you're in Ardha Chandrasana, come back to Trikonasana. And then everybody pull up with that right arm and come up out of the pose. Turn your left foot in, bring your hands to the chest and either step your left leg in and your right leg in or jump your legs back together, Tadasana. If you have a brick, make sure to have some bricks handy. If you just have one brick, it's fine. Just have it on the right-hand side of your mat for Parjva Konasana. So stand in Tadasana. Bring your feet, bring your hands to the center of your chest. And again, step or jump your legs out. Step your right leg out, step your left leg out. These are the essential standing poses. Every day you can do these to build stamina, strength, flexibility, Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg all the way out like we did in Trikonasana. Inhale, as you exhale, bend your right knee, place the knee carefully over the ankle, get your hip as low, bring your right forearm onto the thigh as low as the, get your hip as low as the knee, bring your right forearm onto the thigh, bring your left hand onto the hip. Make sure as you bend this leg that this thigh isn't dropping, it's not going down. Lift the inner left leg up, press more into the outer edge of that left foot, even as you bend the knee. Now bring your right buttocks forward. Some of you stay here, okay? Stay on the fore a forearm on the thigh. Otherwise, bring your hands down to your brick and move your right knee back into the brick. Roll the left shoulder back, lift your head. Take this top arm up, turn the arm and extend it along the ear. Those of you who can, you lift your chin and you look up under that left underarm. And then lift up your left arm and pull yourself up out of the pose. Turn your right foot in. If anyone needs to bring your legs back together and then go back out, feel free. Otherwise, I'm going to the other side. So turn your right foot in slightly. Turn your whole left leg out from the top of the thigh. Turn those legs out. Lift your chest. Remember the buttocks is even here. It's still going down. The outer hips are um, uh, cinching in. Cinch the outer hips in. I like that word, cinch. So now bend your knee as you exhale, bring the knee right over the ankle, get your hip as low as the knee without dropping this leg, lift it. And then bring the forearm down onto the thigh, bring your right hand onto the hip. 
Maybe this is your pose. Stay here. Others of you, bring your left hand down to the brick or the floor and press the knee back into the arm. Lengthen this, this left inner thigh. But is this leg dropping? Press the outer edge of that right foot. It should feel like your legs are splitting this way. Now lift your chest. Take your top arm up. Turn the arm and extend the arm towards the back of the ear. Parsvakonasana. Stay here, looking straight forwards, or you can look up under that right underarm. Turn your abdomen up towards the ceiling. Now lift up your right arm and push down with your left heel. Come up, bring your hands to the chest, and then step your legs or jump your legs back together and stand in Tadasana. Good, let's do Ardha Uttanasana. So place your hands onto a wall at the level of your shoulders, this way. Turn your hands out 45 degrees and walk your feet back. So most of you who've been to the classes know this pose. Your feet are at least as wide as the hands, but you can always go wider. Take the heels wider than the toes. A lot of you will stay here. The legs are straight, the arms are straight, even here. You're moving the root of the thighs back. Move it back, move it back until you feel some lengthening of the armpits. Others of you, bring your hands down to the floor. Take your hands wider than your sticky mat and bend your, release the head down. So if you have lower back sensitivity, please keep your hands on the wall, work there, hamstring restriction, work there. Otherwise, come down for Uttanasana with your fingertips on the floor. Thighs are back, don't let the buttocks go back. Take the ribs down, take the head down. And then everybody either walk to the wall or bring your hands to the hips, reach the chest forward and up you come. Great, come back to Tarasana. Well, Virabhadrasana one. Okay, so bring your right leg forward and bring your left leg back. So have about four feet distance between your feet and you have a heel to heel alignment. If you wanna use the wall for that back heel, that's completely fine. So bring this left heel, le left hip forward as you take the inner left thigh back and then bend your front knee, get the knee to come right over the ankle. Keep your right hip in, lift your abdomen up, even here strongly, use your thumbs here and push the buttocks down like we did in Tadasana. Push it until there's a length that comes to the lower back. It should not be crunching the lower back, it should be lengthening. That's because the buttocks has to get strongly pushed down. Lift your abdomen. Those of you can, take your arms up. Reach, uh, reach these left ribs forwards. Go down with your hips. Get the hips as low as that front knee. And then come on up and release. Other side. Bring your left leg forward and bring your right leg back. Place your front heel in line with your back heel, unless you happen to need more space, in, in which case move your left foot more to the left. Bring your hands to the hips. Press into the sticky mat with the outer edge of that right foot and bring your right hip forward. Move the inner right thigh back. Use your thumbs, push the top of the buttocks down. Push the top of the buttocks downwards and then bend that front knee. Bend your left knee and get the knee to come right over the ankle. Make sure the hip doesn't drift. Now as you bend the front knee, straighten the back leg. Use your thumbs, push it down. Push the top of the buttocks towards the bottom of the buttocks and lift your abdomen up. Bring these right ribs forwards and maybe extend your arms upwards. Go all the way up and then straighten the front knee and bring your arms and your legs back together. Good, we'll do that one more time. Intermediate students, you'll go into Virabhadrasana three, okay? So I'll give you the cue, you'll go into Virabhadrasana three. So bring your right foot forward, bring your left leg back. And we'll do it classically. So press the outer edge of your left foot down, bring the left hip forward, bring the right hip back. Bring your arms out to the sides, turn your arms and raise your arms. Lock your thumbs above you and pull your thumbs and lift upwards, pull your thumbs apart to lift the rib cage up. Bring these left ribs forward. Maintain that as you bend your front knee, go down, go down, bend the front knee. Those of you doing warrior three, bring your upper body down onto your front thigh, look forward and then turn your back heel up and go into Virabhadrasana three. That's it, bring your hips down. Those here just keep pulling upwards, go up, go up, go up, go down with your hips, bring the left ribs forward. Those in warrior three, come back to warrior one. And then everybody come on up and bring your arms down and bring your arms and your legs back together. Tadasana. Bring your hands to the hips. Bring your left leg forward and bring your right leg back. 
have a heel to heel alignment. Unless you need again to move that left foot further over. So this left hip comes back, inner left thigh back. So bring your arms up and lock your thumbs. The less habitual way, pull your thumbs and squeeze your outer upper arms in. If this feels too much for anybody, work with your hands on your hips. If you feel like you're getting overheated or out of breath and then bend your left knee, go down. Keep this left hip in. Okay, now those doing warrior three, bring your upper body down onto your thigh, look forward, turn your back heel up and go forward. Straighten your standing leg, those in warrior three. Those here, pull upwards, go up, straighten the back leg, bend the front knee, go down with your hips, bring the right ribs forward, go upwards. And now straighten the knee, come back into warrior one, those in warrior three, and then bring your arms and your legs back together and stand in Tadasana. Okay, now if you have some bricks, have some bricks. If, uh, otherwise, you can use a chair, whatever happens to be around. You can even use a wall for this pose if you don't have any of those things. We're going to do Parsvottanasana. So you can use this. You can use your hands on a wall here. Otherwise, we're going to come down to some bricks. So it's the same foot configuration as warrior one, right? Bring your right foot forward and bring your left leg back. Bring this left hip forward, bring the right hip back. Lift up through your chest, draw the shoulders back. Keep moving the top of the buttocks down. Now press more of your body weight into your outer left heel. Keep the top buttocks moving down, lift your chest and look upwards and then start to come forwards. Right hip back, left hip forwards. Keep your elbows parallel and then bring your hands down to the bricks or down to the floor as long as you're not rounding in your back or bending the knees. So lift your chest. Now, once you're here, take, press the inner right foot down, draw the outer right hip back even more. Press the outer edge of your left foot down and take that inner left leg back. So there's a, a squaring off of the hips and a cinching in. Draw the hips in, lift your chest. Intermediate students, take par Parvrita uh, Trikonasana. Go into Parvrita Trikonasana. Straighten your legs here. Lift your chest upwards. If you're in Parvita Trikonasana, turn your abdomen, turn your ribs, lift up through the left arm. Those of you in Parvita Trikonasana, come back to Parsvottanasana. Some of you stay here, lower back sensitive. Otherwise, have your hands on a wall with your right foot forward. Otherwise, you take the bricks wider apart and then you go down over this leg. Maybe the bricks go lower. Maybe you lose the bricks all together and you release down. Turn your abdomen from the left side to the right side. And then come back up, put your hands on those bricks or the chair, or just walk to the wall. Bring your hands to the hips and come on up. Bring your arms and your legs back together. Stand in Tadasana. Okay, so we'll do the other side. Remember, if you're using the wall, you're just standing with your left foot a little bit away from the wall. You're taking the the right leg back and your hands can come way up the wall. This is a great way to do the pose. I often teach it this way. It gives a lot of space. Otherwise, we'll do it more classically. So bring your left leg forward, bring your right leg back. Press the outer edge of that right heel down. Bring the right hip forward, draw the left hip back. Bring your hands to the buttocks. And again, use the thumbs to move the buttocks down. Raise the abdomen up. Roll your shoulders back, lift your chest. Look upwards and then start to come forwards. Don't let your elbows come apart. Left hip back, right hip forward. Bring your hands down to the bricks or to the floor without rounding your back. So get a concave to come, an arching of your upper back by pressing into the bricks, lifting your chest forward. Intermediate students, take your time and come into Parvrita Trikonasana from Parsvottanasana. Everybody else here. So press the left inner foot down, draw the outer left hip back. Press the outer right foot down, draw the outer right hip forward, cinch your hips, and then lift your chest forward. Lift your chest. As you're looking forward, lift your head from the sides of your neck, not so much from the back of your head. Now, those of you in Parvita Trikonasana, turn your abdomen, turn your ribs, extend the left arm down, reach the right arm up, and then everybody come back to Parsvottanasana. Concave back, take the bricks wider, turn your abdomen from the right side to the left side, and lower back sensitive, you're staying here or your hands are on the wall. Others of you who can, you're coming down. Maybe you lose the bricks or lower the bricks as you come down over that left leg. Parsvottanasana, head down. 
the legs are extended. It's a deep hamstring extension pose. Come back to concave back. Bring your hands to the hips or walk up to the wall and come on up. Could bring your arms and your legs back together. Stand in Tadasana. Okay, Prasarita Padottanasana. So some of you might need those bricks. So stand near to the back edge of your mat. Bring your hands to the center of your chest. And again, step or jump your legs out. So bring your heels in line with the back edge of the mat. Roll the thighs in. Lift the abdomen up. Again, use your thumbs here on the top of the buttocks to push the top of the buttocks down. Lift your chest, roll the shoulders back, look upwards, and then start to come forwards, but move your groins, your groins back away from the camera. Lift your breastbone towards the camera, elbows in. Bring your hands down to the floor or bricks or chairs, whatever you happen to have around, and get a concave to come in your back. Some of you stay here. Others of you, um, if you have hamstring restriction, just stay here. Maybe you're on some bricks and you're just working the pose here, straightening your legs, lifting your chest. Some of you can walk your hands forward, which is the second easiest place to go, hands forward. And then a lot of you can walk your hands back and come with your head down onto the floor. Those of you who can, you can even hold onto the outer ankles, intermediate students. Straighten the legs, move the inner groins back, release the head down, but lift the shoulders up. Now bring your hands forward under the, alongside your head, lift your chest. Shuffle your feet closer together. Bring your hands to the hips, reach the chest forward and up you come. Stand in Tadasana. Okay, we'll do downward facing dog now with your heels at the wall, okay? So downward dog with your heels at the wall. If you have a wall, if you don't have a wall, what you can do is you can hold on, you can double the front edge of your sticky mat this way and make it into a handle and then pull it forward to get your heels to come down. Otherwise, you bring your feet back and you turn your hands out 45 degrees and you press your heels back into the wall. Push back into the wall. A lot of you are gonna stay here. A lot of you are gonna stay here. So just push the heels back. In fact, let's all just do this first. Push the heels back. Lift your hips up and back. Straighten the arms, straighten the legs, lift the hips. Keep your head right in between your arms. Adamukha Svanasana. Maybe you can slide the heels lower down to lengthen the calf muscles to the heels and hit the heels back into the wall. And then slowly come down and rest in Child's pose. Big toes touching, knees apart, reach the arms forward. Okay, some of you will do that again. Others of you will do half or full handstand, okay? So half handstand looks this way. So you come into downward dog with your heels at the wall, then you walk your hands back, one and a half distance back, and then you bring your legs up the wall for half handstand. If this is no good for you, you can take heels up. You can do downward dog again with your heels up the wall or simply put your legs up the wall like this because it's basically the same shape, isn't it? If you're on your period today, definitely take this pose instead. So you can just extend your arms up alongside your ears. You can take this pose if you're not going up into half arm balance. Once you've done half arm balance, you can rest in child's pose. Full arm balance, folks, you go up into full arm balance. So you bring your hands one hand's distance from the wall, hands are turned out 45 degrees. Those of you doing half, repeat it. Repeat half arm balance when you're ready. Those of you doing full, go up again with your less habitual leg. So take your time, I know we have a limited time, so be as spacious with your time as you can, but get as much yoga in as you can without feeling like you're rushing. Straighten your arms, straighten your legs, roll the outer thighs in, reach the inner legs up. So you're in any of those poses. I hope that was clear. Either legs up the wall, downward dog with your heels at the wall. Okay, and then those of you who did full arm balance, you can try this. Have your back to the wall, Uttanasana with your back to the wall. 
Otherwise, you're resting in child's pose or you have your, your legs up the wall in this way. Okay, whatever is you're in, come into the resting pose, either child's pose or Uttanasana with your back to the wall. Okay, those of you with your legs up the wall, begin to roll to your side and come on up. Okay, and then we're gonna sit on a brick in uh, Virasana, okay? So sit in Virasana. So I'm just gonna turn my back to you to show. So you'll have a brick in between the feet. Some of you don't need a brick, of course. You can sit on the floor. So hug the brick with the feet. Reach the toes backwards. And when you come down, move the calf muscles back and out to sit your hips onto that brick. So it should look like that. You can always move this brick higher. If you have any knee sensitivity, you can even use two bricks. If by chance you don't have a brick, try sitting with your legs all the way together. If you have any knee sensitivity, you can also just sit in a cross-legged position. Just sit in a cross-legged position this way. It's fine to do that as well. Otherwise, you're sitting in Virasan. Okay. Those of you in Virasan pose, once you've moved the calf muscles out to the sides and your sitting bones are evenly on that brick, pull the skin from around your shin bones forward. Bring the sides of your waist back. Bring your outer shoulders back. And then interlace your fingers, turn your palms forwards and go all the way up. Go down with your sitting bones, go up with the sides of your ribs. Just take your outer upper arms in, relax your jaw, relax your tongue, relax your throat. Visualize that someone's pulling your wrists upwards. Go up with your wrists. Someone's pulling your inner wrists, your outer wrists, but move the sitting bones down, the sides of the waist draw back. And then bring your arms forward and down and take a twist to the right. So bring your right hand. If you can, turn the top of the right arm out and either bring it to a brick behind you or to the floor behind you if you can reach. But for some of you, you can even reach around and hold on to this heel. Hold on to the right heel with your, or you hold on to your left heel with your right hand as you turn. Come back to the center. Interlace your fingers the less habitual way. Turn your palms forwards and raise your arms up. So go down with your sitting bones, bring your abdomen back, lift your side ribs up, take your outer upper arms in and then visualize someone's pulling your wrists upwards. Go up with the wrists, relax the back upper neck muscles down and then bring your arms forward and down. Inhale, turn the top of your left arm out, bring your left hand either behind you onto a brick or the floor and bring your right hand onto the, the left knee. Some of you can reach around and you can hold onto this heel, right? And you turn, so this is Parsva Virasana. Keep the abdomen back, lift up through the sides of your trunk. Be more conservative. If you don't know any of these poses, just be more on the conservative side. Don't force yourself into a pose you don't understand. Use your breath to turn a little bit more. And then release. Let's bring the arms out to the sides. And we're gonna bring the right arm under the left arm for Garudasana. So you cross your arms above the elbows and then you bring this uh, right hand back towards your face, bring your left arm forward and bring your left hand to the inside of that right hand. The outer edges of your little fingers are going forwards. Keep your, come back with your sitting bones. Don't come forward, move your abdomen back. Lift the elbows upwards and move your hands, move your forearms away from the head. Keep the sides of your waist back. Spread the shoulder blades towards the elbows. And then release. Bring your arms out to the sides. And now bring your right arm under your left arm. Or just do the opposite. So this right hand comes back and it comes around. Do the opposite if I misspoke there. So lift the elbows upwards and then move your forearms forward. 
Spread the shoulder blades towards the outer elbows. Relax the back upper neck muscles down. And release. Great, now stretch out your legs. And you can stay up on your brick. If you have a brick, you might even have to go higher. If your um, sacrum is falling backwards, make sure to keep that sacrum nice and lifted upwards. Otherwise, pull the right buttocks flesh back, pull the left buttocks flesh back. Raise your arms upwards, Urdhva Hastasana. Keep lifting the sacrum upwards. Lift your abdomen upwards. If you're falling back, please sit on height. You can even sit on a chair in this way. You can sit up on a chair and just this will be your pose. If you have any lower back sensitivity, just sit on a chair either here or here and just use that as your pose. Everybody else, come forward, hold on to the feet. If you're in the chair, just stay upright, either holding on to the sides of the chair, otherwise your arms are lifted. Everybody here, come forward, lift your chest upwards, bend your elbows out to the sides and come forward. If this feels too extreme, decentralize your legs. Decentralize the legs. So move the fronts of the thighs into the backs of the thighs. Bring your ribs forward towards the elbows. Draw the abdomen back towards the sacrum and then pull the sacrum up towards your, the back of your head. And then reach your arms forward and come all the way up and release. Great, okay, now, those of you who do headstand pose, get ready and go up into your headstand pose. Okay, so get ready and go up into the Shears Asana headstand. Those of you not doing headstand today, you're gonna lie down on your back with me. Lie down on your back, and you'll take Baddha Konasana. So lie down on your back, move the buttocks flesh towards the feet, bring your feet really close to the pelvis and let your knees go out to the sides. And then hold on to the sides of the sticky mat and turn the tops of your arms out. Headstanders, go up and be in your pose. Shears asana. And then once you have the buttocks flesh lengthened and you have that, that turn of the top of the arms, spread the inner thighs. Knee sensitive, you can put your bricks outside the knees. Otherwise, raise your arms upwards and just extend your arms away from your hips. Press your heels into each other, spread the inner thighs out. Headstanders, keep pressing the forearms down, lifting your shoulders up, bring the front ribs back and extend your legs upwards. Okay, now those here, headstanders, you can stay in the pose for another few moments. Bring your arms down and then just cross your legs like we do at the very beginning of the class. Cross your legs into Svastikasana. So bring your feet under the knees and then lengthen the fronts of the thighs. And again, lift up your arms and this time hold your elbows and pull backwards with the elbows. So this is Supta Svastikasana. Headstanders, keep straightening your legs. Rolling the outer thighs in and bring your tailbone deep in. And then those here, switch the cross of your legs. Lengthen the inner thighs towards the knees. Switch the cross of your arms. Headstanders start to come down. If you haven't already come down, rest in child's pose. Okay, and then those here, you can bring your arms back alongside the body and just stretch out your legs. And then everybody, come on up, 
roll to the side. Make sure to have a belt handy, so grab a belt. You can use a towel, you can use a, a actual belt, whatever you happen to have around. So come and get a belt and we'll do Supta Padangustasana, one and two, and the turning version. Okay, so lie down on your back. And again, move the buttocks flesh towards the feet and then put the belt on the bottom of that right foot and take it up. Get your right leg extended, even if it's here. Extend your left leg, press it down, press the inner left thigh down. Keep both of your legs straight and then some of you can start to pull this foot in closer and closer. Keep moving the right thigh away from your abdomen, pulling the shin bone closer. Draw those outer shoulders down. I'm trying to put these, um, the Supta Padangustasana series into as many classes as possible because they're just such important poses. Bring your, you can bring your brick there for extra support right outside the hip, that's optional. As you bring this leg out to the side, you can bring your right elbow down. Later today, I'm gonna to ask my teacher, Colleen, but I think she quoted Mr. Angar saying, if you do these poses every day, like 50% of what's challenging in your hips and your legs will be solved. So that's all the more reason to do these poses on a regular basis. Plus, I just think they feel so good and they're calming. They can be calming to the mind. As you're in this pose, you're extending this right leg. Make sure that the whole left side of your body, the outer left leg, the outer left torso is all the way down. And then come back to the center, switch hands on the belt, and bring that right leg across. Try to keep your right leg right in line with the hip and move this outer right hip towards your inner left foot. Move it down. and release good let's just stretch the legs out bring your legs together lift your arms up lock your thumbs above you pull your thumbs like we did in virabhadrasana one notice is your back arching move the buttocks even here so i'll move that brick so you can see but try to turn your head at the least often i know it's going to be challenging to not turn your head to the camera that's one thing we have to work uh, watch out with with these online classes not to turn the head too much so move the buttocks flesh towards the heels, cross your thumbs the opposite way. You should feel like your abdomen is drawing down. Good, and then bring your arms back, bend both of your knees, keep the buttocks flesh lengthening towards the heels as you belt that left foot. Take it up. Have a blanket, of course, under your head here as needed. So make sure that your, your left leg isn't bent, extend it and then extend your right leg. Keep the inner right thigh moving down, extend the inner legs. And then as you exhale, some of you can start to pull this left foot closer in. The left shin bone comes towards you, but keep moving the left thigh away from you. And the sitting bones move towards the right foot. They don't come up, the, the sitting bones move down. So there should be a very slight arch in your back here. You shouldn't feel like your back is flat on the floor and the right thigh is still down. Now hold onto the belt with your left hand, use that brick right outside your left hip for better stability as needed, and then bring your left leg out to the side. Bring your right arm out to the side. And as you elongate this left inner leg, move the abdomen back to the right, get the outer right leg down, the right torso down, extend this arm out to the side, the right arm. Supta Padangustasana to the side, Harsva. Come back to the center, hold the belt with your right hand. Keep your left leg in line with the hip. Inhale and then bring this left leg over a little bit. It's not dramatic, it's not all the way. Keep your right toes going upwards. Use your left hand to move that outer left hip down. Keep lifting into the belt with the outer edge of that left foot. And turn, turn the abdomen back.
and then release. Okay, let's do Supta Padangustasana. Bent knee. So bend your knees. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh without letting your left hip swing out to the side. Keep your left hip in as you bring your left leg up, interlace the fingers on the back of that left thigh or if possible, the front of the left shin. Draw your right toes back and move your right knee away from your right shoulder. Keep the corners of your buttocks down. Don't let the buttocks be pulled upwards. So you can even use a belt here as needed. Draw the outer shoulders down. This is Supta Padangustasana, bent knee. And this is the very beginning stage of the pose. And release, other side. Cross your left ankle over, bring your leg up, interlace your fingers, pull this shin in. Interlace, maybe you come here, keep the bottom buttocks down, draw the left toes back and move the left knee toward, away from that left shoulder. Keep the sides of your waist down and the outer hips down. and release. Good, reach for your belt and put your belt on the ankles. So if you can, you can double the belt, gives you a nice good width, hold onto the belt around the ankles. Even if you can hold onto your ankles, it's useful to use the belt. And then you can go to the ankles later, but it's, it's never harmful to use the belt. So turn the tops of your arms out and lift your hips up. Move the shin bones back, lift the middle buttocks up, and lift that tailbone in and up. Tailbone in and up. Get the shoulders to go down, outer shoulders to go down. Pull the arms down and lift your shoulder blades up and then come down. Maybe you can bring the feet a little bit closer and then take up any slack. Have the outer edges of your feet parallel. Turn the tops of your arms out and raise up, go up. If the screen just went blank, it's because I'm getting a call there. It will come back on. So turn the tops of your arms out. Lift your hips way, way up. You should feel some stretch in the fronts of your thighs, right? The thighs get to stretch. Get the inner, the thighs parallel by pressing the inner edges of your feet down. And then come down. And we'll do that one more time. Now those of you who can hold the ankles, go ahead and hold the ankles. If you can do that with integrity, okay? So turn the tops of your arms out and then raise up, go up. And if you'd like to do a Urdhva Danyarasana, anyone who knows that pose, you can also take this time to go up into Urdhva Danyarasana once or twice. Straighten the arms, bring the shin bones back, lift the middle buttocks up, lift your shoulder blades up into the back, and then come down. Okay, and then just draw the right knee into the chest. This way. And then the left knee into the chest. And then both knees into the chest. Shoulder standards, get ready for shoulder stand. and go up into your pose. Okay, everybody else here. You're gonna take um, Setu Banda. So if you have a brick, you'll put a brick under your hips. Okay, so the brick can be at any level. I'll also show you what you can do if you don't have a brick, okay? So you can put a brick under the hips. This way can be at the first level can be at the second level, can be at the top level. You can even use two bricks, one on top of each other, okay? So you've all, most of you've been to class and you know what I'm talking about. And then you can either work in the pose here with your legs bent, or you can try to extend your legs outwards, rolling the outer thighs in. Roll those outer thighs in. Shoulder standards go up into your pose. If you feel discomfort in the back in this pose, say to Banda, just have the knees, maybe lower the brick down. 
to the medium level, and then maybe you can extend the legs without feeling that discomfort. But just like we talked about at the very beginning of class, the buttocks flesh has to strongly go towards the feet. If it's not doing that, you're gonna feel a crunching of the back. So that buttocks flesh has to strongly lengthen towards the backs of the knees as you extend the legs out. So once you find your right height, just settle there down into the pose. And you can also extend your arms up this way. Shoulder standers be up in your pose. Press your upper arms down. If you're in doing chair, go up and with your chair. Keep extending your arms away from the legs. And then those of you in Setu Bandha, bring your arms back alongside your body, turn your palms upwards. If this doesn't feel good and you don't have a brick, I forgot to mention, just go ahead and put your legs up the wall and you can put um, some, some pillows or blankets, anything you have around under your pelvis and you can rest in that way. I got so into this pose, I forgot to mention that. This feels nice. Make sure the legs are active here. We're gonna be going over about two or three minutes. If you have to leave at 12, that's okay. Okay, and then those of you in Setu Banda, bend your knees. Those of you in shoulder stand, you can stay long. You can even let the class end and continue your practice and take Shavasana on your own. It's really up to you. Just pause here with the knees bent if you were doing Setu Banda. Okay, and then lift up your hips and then take that brick out from under, let your lower back neutralize, okay? And then we'll come to Shavasana. You can always have a blanket under your head here. You can put something under your knees. But again, one last time for the class today, move the buttocks flesh towards the feet, lengthen the thighs and let the legs release. It should feel like your legs are lengthening away from your hips. They're going out. The legs are getting longer and longer. And then use your thumbs to pull the occipital bone back so that you're right on the base of your skull. Shoulder standards, you can come down and join us or just take your own time in your practice. Turn the tops of your arms out and lengthen your arms away. Lengthen the arms, take off glasses. Relax your lower jaw away from your upper jaw. Pacify the root of your tongue. And relax your eyeballs away from your eyelids. Draw the inner ears deep away from the outer ears. Bring the front of your brain towards the back of your brain. Settle down, releasing the stress, the inner stress, the outer stress, the tensions, the locks, let it go.
Now feel free to take as much time as you'd like to in Shavasana. You can just let the meeting end. If you'd like to spend some time in Shavasana, meditate afterwards, feel free to do that. Otherwise, bring your hands to your abdomen, deepen your breath. And then bend your knees. And then roll to the right side. And then slowly come up and then sit in any cross-legged position. Otherwise, just stay in Shavasana. Just take a moment to integrate the effects of your practice and let it deeply affect your life, your body, your mind, your mood. Bring your hands to the heart center. And as we've been doing at the end of every class, let's do one more Om for all this whole world, especially those who are affected in a very personal way by the virus. So let's take a deep breath in. Lift your chest way upwards, bow your head downwards. Namaste. Thank you so, so much for coming to class. And um, please remember there's another free class tomorrow if you're interested in meditation or the philosophy of yoga, we call it satsang. So that's another free class tomorrow at 2.30. Otherwise, I'll see you the next time. Be safe, be well, sending lots and lots of love and encouragement.